A USFL, XFL mergers potentially on the way. When could it happen? What could it mean? All that and more on the next episode of the USFL podcast. One, two, three. to another amazing edition of the USFL podcast. I'm the rep representing USFL Newsroom, the leaders in USFL News. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's a good week. It's a great week. And I'll tell you what, it might really in fact be the best week ever And not only because we're talking about a potential merger here, baby. Last time on the show, what do we say? We said, Zachy boy, he's going to be taking some time off. Well, you might be looking to my right and you'd say, that looks like Zach. Well, it's Zach. Zach is back. This news is too big to be skipping out. How are you doing today, my friend, Zach Kyleman? I hear the audience collectively say, he lied. (laughs) He said he was gone. I thought James was supposed to be on. No, 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 no. This worked out perfectly. I'm glad to be on for this episode in particular, uh, not just because I can be on, but the fact like this, uh, this uh, report that just dropped as we are recording today uh, is huge. Uh, It affects the league we cover affects spring football in general. Uh, We have to come on, you know, what we're talking about because of the tease, but like, I'm I'm glad I'm here because because we have so much that is going to be discussed in the next less than a year leading into whatever schedule is coming up. Insane news today for the world of spring and alternative football. Well, we talk about it quite frequently. We always say, well, I didn't have this on my spring football bingo list for the year, the XFL, the USFL, whatever it might be, whichever bingo list it could possibly be. And You know, I don't think I had this on there. I don't want to front. We didn't know that this was going to happen. Now, I will say, before we jump into all of this, I know, Zach, I've told you behind the scenes, there was a couple times, there was a couple things that I've heard that was like, you know, I think there might be more to this than than's being let on. But you know what? I You don't really go to market with something unless you know all the facts. Well, now we know. None of the facts, but some of the detail, if that makes sense. We know some details. We did a little bit of digging. We had to go live because, dude, this news could drop soon. Before we get into that, let's do some housekeeping. At USFL Podcast, maybe a limited time only. We'll get into what that means here. (laughs) Go follow us at USFL Podcast, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Threads, if it ever picks up again. We got that TikTok, baby. You never know when I'm going to start dancing. (laughs) getting too hype, too cool, too much. Who knows what's going to happen over there? So make sure you're following. Make sure you're checking out usflnewsroom.com daily because, I mean, that news, Axio dropped the news. We were right on top of it with some extra details. Mm -hmm. So you make sure you're checking it out daily for all the latest USFL news or XFL news for at xfl.com or whatever new domain we end up, uh, might end up getting here. Never know. Uh, subscribe 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 even if whatever happens this is still the channel so here's what you want to do subscribe click the bell it builds morale are you an xfl fan and in shock and saying you know what i gotta go check out this usfl podcast because they might be a partner of my league of choice well click the bell it builds morale it's gonna brighten your day it's gonna make everything better in your life i'm telling you if there's a gray cloud following you around click the bell it's gonna go away you looking for a raise click that bell your boss is gonna hear it from far far away and on top of that you're gonna hear and see whenever we drop a new episode a new video or when we go live because well you know we have a whole new season three to worry about merger or not we're making history this year we're getting signed up uh Good fortune favors the one that clicks the bell, and good fortunes might favor the ones that are following spring football, baby. I know. <laughs> big day, big day, big day in spring football. I mean, let's let's just start from the beginning here. Early this morning, we're talking Tuesday morning, Axio. 
they put out a report saying that the XFL and the USFL were in talks on a possible merger. Now, the craziest part of this is this is, you know, some people have equated equated this already to the talks between the CFL and the XFL. And just because they're talking doesn't mean anything's going to happen. <laughs> this is different. <laughs> These guys, uh, what we're hearing have been talking as early on as June, July, right? Not confirmed 100%, yeah. but I've heard that from a few different people, both on XFL side, USFL side, influencers, whatever have you. Um, so I, I, I'm feeling pretty good about that. So this is no, nothing, you know, this didn't just happen today. Now, Zach, I mean, what is your initial take on this? Feeling good, feeling bad? What are I, we? What's going on in that brain ears? I had to hit pause this morning because I, I, I think, uh, I think I, I wasn't, I was not expecting this to happen as fast as it did. I think nobody did, mm -hmm. honestly. We, you, it doesn't matter. I, I know that some people, we, people in the industry play friendly. Fans, it's a different story. And I think a lot of the fan base for both these sides were going. You know what? If this happens, it's like four or five years down the road mm. when like we see which one really lands like more TV money gets more established. And you know what? Now we're here. It's been about a year, year past both of them playing or at least saying they're playing. And now we're talking merger already. I'm just going, wait a minute. Mm. This is a little accelerated. Is it not? Um, so a lot of stuff you got to kind of like, it's almost like read between the lines, trying to figure out, wait, where is this linking up to where we're already at merger talk? Right. Right. You know, that's the thing that got me is like, I don't think we were supposed to be there yet. You know, all the stuff the XFL said on, you know, we're, we're gearing up for season two. We're making all these adjustments internally. The USFL's cleanly said like, Hey, we're playing next year. Mm -hmm. We already have our stuff. That's what fascinates me is we're already at that point. I, I'm that's, actually, it's very fascinating. I'm surprised too. I'm kind of with you. I thought we would see this maybe at the end of season four usfl going into season five or maybe during season five R regardless of the situation who's calling who no matter what I, I figured you know if that's the timeline i think that's what one we're going to see it i mean clearly on both sides i think there's markets that either each of them will be interested in uh at minimum intellectual properties um but uh you know i will say again using the bingo card reference I didn't have it on my bingo card that this would even be a discussion this year. I mean, last we left off, we were talking about speculating about TV deals. Now, this throws a whole new aspect into the mix when we talk about ESPN, ABC, potentially hosting USFL games or whatever the entity ends up being called here. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, right, but the, right. the craziest thing about this is we might know the news. I mean, so that we're recording this on Tuesday. It's dropping on Wednesday. The news could be live when this drops. It could be live today that this drops. It could be live by, by the end of the week, maybe even the end of next week. Now, that's not to say that it will. There's still a lot of things that need to happen for, for this to go down. But the fact that we're, at least what we're hearing, that there's that type of movement on this. I mean, that's another reason emergency episode. I don't even think we brought that up. It's not even Friday here, folks, but we had to <laughs> well, jump I on that too. I mean, destiny came together too. We were just talking about your work schedule. And then today you are free. This news drops today. Let's get in where the fixing's good. Uh, the odds, but what I mean, the odds? I don't know if you were to guess. And I mean, we're going off of nothing here, Zach, this, we know nothing other than, you know, a couple conversations we've had outside of the show and some of the information, in the Axio article. First, I, I, I would wager to say you're, you're shocked in the expediency of the timeline. Uh, but when do you think, I mean, now that we're hearing about this and there is a, a potential timeline in there and again, nothing of this finalist, this merger could not, no, happen, no, I mean, right. Just so everybody knows right. this thing could not happen, but I, I don't know. Something just feels uh, right. And I think it's going to happen. The way it's been more and more, I mean, Axios dropped the original, the original scoop and you've seen everyone else kind of, kind of follow up on that. Sportico also did. It's uh, the way it's used in advanced talks and how 
I think Axios just dropping that we could see something in a week. I, I think that just shows you the urgency of what's going on at this time. And keep in mind, like we're still it's September, but it's also mid September. We're starting to drift into early fall when you would see a lot of these league activities for announcement expansion mm -hmm. and big key pieces of next year start to trickle out. I mean, remember we were talking about last year, like uh, John D. Filippo getting announced as a head coach right. in the USFL, you know, talking about hubs coming up in the USFL that was coming in usually late fall to early winter. I mean, this stuff has to start rolling sooner rather than later, especially if they're talking 2024. Right. Well, Big that's, deal. I mean, that's, you know? yeah, I don't know if we've even touched on that yet. And this is the plan. It can't happen because we have two examples now. The USFL is one of them. The ELF's the other. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible. They're both established. But if you're merging assets and you're picking what markets stay, what markets go, you know, what deals work, what deals don't. You got to get this done. Like, oh, yeah. Times now. Well, and know? that's the that's the craziest part of this too is you know, not it's not just crazy that they're talking. It's not just crazy that we could see a deal as early as the end of this week, maybe even next week. But by the end of the year, that seems like what they're trying to do to play a single season in 2024. That's the craziest right. part about this. Now, now we get into go into all sorts of speculation zone on who and where, what are we going to see, right? Uh, I've heard a few different variations from a few different folks, but I mean, case in point, let's just use Houston as the example, two teams, The, the one first city. talking point I think everyone's gone to since right? there's been talk. Like, besides just saying, whoa, this is nuts. Oh, yeah, what happens to Houston now? Well, because if you theoretically had all 16 join, mm -hmm. You know, someone's going to say, ah, uh, one of them's going to get the boot. Right. And you know? well, now we, now I need to know, am I going to, because I was already roughing them up and going all in, but am I roughing them up in 2024 or am I going all in? Because I'll tell you this, no matter the name of the team, no matter the logo and the look and the feel that Houston team 13 and oh, baby, it doesn't matter what the league's called, what the team's called. They could be a team of invisible men. <laughs> 13 and 0. They bet. Sign them up. Let's get signed Represent up. Represent H Town. So, I in mean, some way. this throws so many things into the mix because beyond the double, the two teams in Houston, we already knew that the XFL looks like they're pulling out of Vegas, right? And there was yeah. talks are they going to move to Tempe, Arizona? Are they going to move to California? Well, now are they just not going to move and dissolve, right? You know, one of the situations I've heard is we might see a situation where some teams in the XFL go away and some teams in the USFL go away, right? And now that was my, when I saw this deal, I was like, man, 16 teams, even though you're already playing, that's still a tall order. 16, mm -hmm. especially, you know, well, we still don't know. Is it going to be a hub model? Are they all going to play in their same cities? Right? There's so many questions to this, Zachy boy. I don't even know where to start. I don't well, even know where I, to start. I, I think let's break down, if you're talking discussion points, let, let's do teams. Okay. I think that's a great place to start because there's so much going around about it right now. The U.S., if, we were, if we're splitting these two leagues in pieces in terms of their discussions – in the XFL, the big talking point is what happens to Vegas. Mm -hmm. You know, in it seems like everyone, I would say the majority, I'm not going to say everybody because that's absolute, but the majority of fans didn't like Cashman Field. And the league definitely did not seem to like Cashman Field. So Vegas was going to be, I think, on the chopping block getting relocated. And it sounds like they are on the chopping block of being relocated for there. In the USFL side, four of eight teams have a hometown. Mm -hmm. There were, there's been talks and rumors on maybe New Orleans or maybe they'll do something in the Northeast with like Philadelphia, New Jersey, like I've been wanting. But beyond that, we know for a fact you got four dedicated hubs and stadiums in the USFL that have a place to play right now. I know that Michigan didn't start, but they've already recommitted. They just need to get stuff figured out. And you have seven in the XFL that have said, we've got these deals. So well, actually, is, I think it's even six because I think there's a situation in Orlando with some upcoming. Really? Uh, and again, I would have to confirm. So don't don't 
Kill me in the chat. Actually, yeah, kill know, me in the we'll chat. Be, I don't this care. Is, Whatever. But this up. is XFL speculative. Yeah, we'll just but throw I, that no, out I there. think that there is a situation you know? there. So I mean, that puts two two markets in peril for the XFL: Las Vegas and Orlando. So that gives them six teams. Then you mentioned with the four teams in the USFL that already have would, markets. If you count, that would be ten. The Maulers. And honestly, I think we could see this thing land between ten and twelve teams. I don't think we're getting sixteen teams. Would I love? If we had 16 teams in 2024, oh, hell yeah, sign me up all day and night. You know, I'm going all in on that idea, especially if we had two Houston teams. You know, I'd be you shy, no off weeks. Every week's a home week. Every week's a home week. You know, that would be awesome. clashes and all that jazz, you know. It'd be great. It would be spectacular. Um, but, I mean, realistically, some of these teams are going to go. Well, let's just look at the XFL real quick. St. Louis ain't going nowhere. If you're a Battle Hawks fan oh, no. and you're even so uh, just thinking about shivering in your boots, uh, you're crazy. Yeah. If anyway, you might as well get this combo going with what what do we th- what are we damn sure is going to stick? Yeah. Like because yeah, St. Louis, hell no. D.C., hell no. Mm-hmm. I heard, I had someone ask, don't take Birmingham, dude. Birmingham ain't going anywhere. Birmingham ain't that going is an nowhere. established base. Michigan, hell no. Too good of a relationship at this point with with the city. Memphis, they had a two year deal. If they're going to merge, the U.S. is going to fight to have that deal. Mm-hmm. You know, they re-upped. It was a great community engagement there. I think, for example, if we're looking San San Antonio, mm-hmm. you don't bail on San Antonio, right? That was a big pride for the XFL. 100. They don't want to leave San Antonio. Yeah. You know, and then Houston, one of those two is going to get a team. They, I think, no matter what, they want to be in that top four, top five TV market there. Someone's staying, no matter what. Yeah. Houston is a is a spring football city doesn't matter who's there someone's staying there. some could say it's the best spring football city i know i <laughs> would be one of those people <laughs> no you would because i'm all in <laughs> on the idea of hughes h town spring football league swang is all day sign us up and if you don't know what a swang is go google it it's awesome i need to get some swang is from my tesla <laughs> i'll tell you what is one of my biggest question marks and it's because of this specific deal now with a merger what happens to Canton? Well, so to me, so let's go. I think Canton sticks around. I think Canton's earned. Do they place. make a team in Canton though? That's the thing. Like, do they just take one of them, and just slap them in there? You know, well, and make it an Ohio team. If you if know? they do any, they should. And I hope this happens so nobody gets mad at me for saying this, but they should be ashamed of themselves if it's not the Maulers. The Maulers, I feel like, earned that spot. They went from being the worst team in the league to going to the championship. Sure, they couldn't get it done, but I mean that kind of turnaround is pretty impressive in itself. Yeah. And I think Canton did well in a market where technically they had no team last year. And they were pretty impressive when it comes to ticket sales. I think they've at least earned a spot. Um so I, I'll put it this way: any team, whether it's the XFL or the USFL, I feel like if they have tickets on sale or had in the case of the roughnecks where they had them and they took them down because there's a, a little uh, relocation situation going on. Right, uh, right. I think all of those teams are safe right now. People might say, well, what about the Michigan Panthers? Because their, their tickets aren't on sale yet. I still think they're good. I still think they're fine. I think that's more about getting just some of the details worked out, at least from what I understand. Does this throw yeah, it in I, the mix? I don't know. I don't know. That's why I list them right away. I mean, you have, they just won the community award out there. They've talked about how the city loves their embrace, how they've embraced Detroit. You know, it's a little bit unique ticket scenario because remember the lions run their tickets. It's Mm -hmm. not the league. So you have to go through them when you're doing with Ford field. But that one, I almost have as a lock. Like they're like, that goes in the lock list. You know, beyond that, it's just kind of depends on how you feel market by market how you win. I mean, again, the USFL is the one that doesn't have as many in stadiums. So you have to assume unless they really love one, like for example, New Jersey's the number one television market. Mm -hmm. If you're merging two leagues that are focused on the, on some of the biggest sports names, because remember Disney's going to be involved in some way with this Fox owns the USFL, which means you have the two biggest sports television companies in the U S in terms of like, sports coverage yeah. in Fox and ESPN, they're going to want the largest audiences. Yes. They're going to keep their fan bases with crowds, mm-hmm. but the USFL has the New York market technically in a brand. 
you don't have anything specifically in LA, but there's been stuff that fans have been saying, Hey, you should go to California or out that way because there's more West coast exposure in the XFL. So they're going to have their say, Mm -hmm. like, I think part of it's going to be, you're going to see team brands that are going to be like, Hey, let's work on TV broadcasting coverage. Mm -hmm. So like new, New York or New Jersey, I think they'll look at that. I think that maybe you consider Philadelphia. I don't know, but like, those two are going to be, I think, in play a lot. You're going to definitely look at keeping – I mean, Seattle I don't see as going away either. you got to figure out some attendance stuff and some sc- scheduling, but they're a diehard fan base. I mean, that's going to be the big jinx of it is like, you know, what U.S. small markets do you keep that aren't in market? And do we keep – how much maximum of the deals with the XFL do we keep? And how how easily can you leave some of those deals if you don't want to keep them? Because that's the other part. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're locked in – there's penalties for bailing on cities like that. Oh, sure. Like you, there's like, remember St. Louis, when we did, remember when they went, when the expo went bankrupt in Mm 2.0, that deal was insane. Right. How much money they were paying. So not saying every stadium's like this, but you do run the risk of having to throw away upwards of a million, few million dollars. If you don't keep up negotiations with city stadium agreements, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So you have to balance all of this right. with teams. Right now, it, it, this is, it'll be super interesting to see how this all plays out. Um, now, you know what? Uh, beyond the when it's going to happen, what teams? I think the big talk amongst everybody is what the heck is this thing going to be called? Yeah, right? that too. Could it be the XFL? Could it be the USFL? I mean, from what I understand is anything's on the table. We could keep one of the two existing names. We could see something completely different. And honestly, it sounds like they're even, if anything, it's being leaned towards being a completely new identity entirely. Now, yeah, speculation zone. I'm just going to throw one out there. I'm just going to throw one out there. <clears throat> and this is, again, just s- speculation zone, folks. This is not anything I've heard. So if this happens, I mean, sweet, sign me up. But don't, it could not happen easily as well. National Spring Football League. Now, you might say, well, why that? I mean, it kind of works. Now, it's it, it work, it, to me, it's very G League in, in the aspect as you have the NFL in your name. You're adding the spring part into it. But I mm-hmm. think the more important one here is that was a name that the USFL or Fox really trademarked in the whole beginning of this whole schmaz when they were setting up the, the USFL trademarks, transferring them over from Brian Woods into Fox's uh, ownership. So, again, I think that one could be out there. The one I've seen online, Zach, and I'll ask you your opinion. I'll give mine. The one I've seen online is USXL. <laughs> Hell no. I that is, please don't I, do I've it. seen I've seen people throwing that around for well over like a year plus. It is the goofiest ass name I have ever seen for it. They're not gonna do it. That's not like at some point you can't do a five letter acronym mm-hmm. for a league like that and make it sound like it's legit. Well, and here's the other thing. If if you guys are merging, this is the the chance. This is your chance to get rid of the X in the XFL because that to me yeah. I like honestly I like the XFL I like the name but there's people that I know that don't watch football or don't watch sports and when I try to explain that the X doesn't mean anything they don't <laughs> get it it's t- they don't like it they don't to me to them it's like well this is second tier and you try to explain well no it can the name came from a different time so there's some nostalgia value and brand value and you could look at it as like alternative or, you know, it, because it's not really extreme. By I mean, I know means. people that still call that still think it's the extreme yeah. football league, which right. is, I mean, yeah, if you do some digging, you know, that's not the case. That was not what the naming was about. And it was just a complete nonsensical use of a letter to make it look cooler. Right. That was all it was about back then. Right. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, it's kind of that naming convention. That's going to be something I'm watching for because like. I, th- I it wasn't just you like there's other people even in our discord by the way check out that discord yeah, link by, below folks. it's popping really badly right now in terms of like conversation but even people bring up like you know nsfl would work considering that they the usfl has that and they go by that on their uh, on their llc i'm like yeah it's sitting right there for them if they wanted like the perfect merger name i mean yeah it's kind of bland mm-hmm. but it's there 
I've seen others that, you know, some will defend their one or the other. Like, you know, we got USFL fans. Hey, keep the USFL name. XFL fans are the same way. I don't know what's going to stick. Right. You know? And even with the whole report that supposedly Redbird reached out first, like, yes, that does indicate maybe one was more eager to do this than the other. But I ain't going to say that that's going to mean that one keeps its name or not. Like, let's, I, let's not jump to that conclusion I, just yet. I, or maybe you on, will. Or do, are you jumping there? No, I'm not jumping there. I'm putting my opinion out there just for anybody at any of these leagues that wants to listen. If I held any weight in anything I say, I kind of want to keep the USFL name. I love the USFL name. I mean, we're the USFL podcast. You know how many times? I love rebranding because I like doing marketing and this won't be a big rebrand because we'll do whatever, whatever the league is called. That's the name of our podcast. Here, folks. So if it's NSFL, here. we'll be the NSFL podcast. This might be the last episode of the USFL to podcast be, that you've honest, ever listened to. I don't know. The NSFL one would be the NSFL one would be so easy for us. Cause all you do is you take the font and you just flip it to yeah. an N. And you just, you I might just it. turn the but U like, upside down and make it a lowercase n and be done with it. Hey, you know what I mean? You Sign me up. We have solu- We have solutions to these upcoming problems already ske- scheduled out. I personally, if I had to pick one, I know it's seen, like someone who's listening to this is an XFL guy's like, oh, of course you did. But like, hear me out. I do slightly lean USFL on this issue, but here's my thing. Now, yes, I think that people with the XFL, you know, well, it's got the rock behind it. And you know what? I'll give you that. Like the rock. Hopefully, in some way, is still involved in the marketing for whatever this merger is. I would assume they're going to lean on that as long as he is somewhat owning it still. Um, that being said, like, which one, if I'm being honest with you, which one has more of, if you're talking NFL connection and getting, like, the NFL casual fan involved, which one has more famous players involved with it and history and longer success built mm-hmm. on it? I mean, not to not to offend it, but like, hey, the XFL 3.0 tried to bail on its own history for obvious reasons, even with 2.0 being the success right. it was early going. The USFL can lean on the fact that it had three seasons of very high quality football and several Hall of Famers behind it in coaching mm-hmm. and players. That's my angle. Like, if I were to lean on it, like, put that as it, but, here's my big but, mm. but put the the XFL social team to work because I will admit I do love and appreciate the work that the USFL social has mm-hmm. done, but the XFL guys, there's stuff where I'm like, man, that would be really nice if these accounts were this, were a little bit more active like they are right now over sure, there. So sure, sure. that's a merger element where I'm like, Hey, take these social guys yeah. that you XF, that the XFL people hired, put them to work with Fox's social team and just start churning oh, sure. because that would be a match made in heaven. Well, that's know? the beauty of all of this, because now if you have a merger, I, I know a lot of people are focused on the players, the teams, the coaches, the, you know, the locations and all that. But there's so many pieces behind the scenes that I, I think would have supplemented either one without a merger. Like, again, you mentioned the social theme, and I think there's other things that the XFL would have loved to have that the USFL had last season and the season prior. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Again, this is all like in motion. It's it's I I was not expecting to recording today. Uh, it shouldn't. I don't think this should be happening right yeah. now. That's what's weird. It's like we we really like I'm surprised, but I'm also even stressing. I really don't believe this should have been a merger talk right now, but yet we have gotten to this point somehow. And again, I don't you know, know the reasons. We've heard that the that Redbird is the one that initiated these conversations. That doesn't mean it was a hundred percent financial thing. It could just be a, Mm. the writings on the wall. It it makes sense for us to come together. Now it leads me to this. And I, I, I I think everybody is assuming, I don't know if anybody's really talked about this in detail, uh, but the rock, will we see the rock? And now here's why I think we may, because you know, me and my spidey senses, ref senses, they always go off. I was watching WWE SmackDown last week. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're and talking about. you now. know who shows up? Good old diddly Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> and I'll tell yes. you, I was like, well, yes. that's interesting because SmackDown is on Fox. Boy, that's interesting. You would think that, you know, they have a show on Fox. They have a show on USA Network, which uh, if, interestingly enough, also airs the USFL. But you would think <laughs> yes. of the two. If he was going to land somewhere, it wouldn't be the one with his competition on it. 
I said, ah, I'm not going to go anywhere with that. But it got me thinking. And here we are. Here we are less than a week later. And I, you know what? I think we do see The Rock. Now, similar to, with the XFL, they always talk about he, The Rock owns the XFL. Well, him and Danny Garcia, they're minority owners. I, really, Redbird Capital owns the XFL. It's Redbird, the faces, The Rock, and Danny. They use them for the promo mostly. But I could see a similar so, yeah. situation, though, in Fox, where you know The Rock is going to own part of the league. And he's, I, I, and I have no problem with him being a figurehead. Now, there's, again, player 54. We're not going to go into detail, but that was well, the Rock all, and Danny all, Garcia show when it should have been about my the players. That it, all my point with that is I hope we don't see that sort of ham-fisted promotion in a league where, look, I get it. The, ex, the Rock is a very popular figure. People do love to see him and stuff. But, like, again, don't overdrown me in watching my football with using Dwayne Johnson because this I'm not tuning in for a Dwayne Johnson promotional piece. Right. right. I am tuning in for football. Right. Now I won't, and I'm not going to deny the fact that he does have a big voice. He does have a large voice. So there is the potential to bring fans in, but everything is fine in moderation. That's all I'll say. Again, if my opinion holds any weight or any merit, sign us up. Now I will say this. If you guys are going to change your name, if it happens, I know one thing they're going to have laying around, Zachy boy, and that's USFL referee shirts. You guys know how to get a hold of me. Hey, just, get, I mean, get those out. You don't leave me hanging here. We've been joking about this for a couple years now on the show. We need the payoff. Now the, the is time the is time. Now. Yeah. The merger is here. The time is like now. John Cena. <laughs> you can't see me. Time My time is, is now. I want you to see me in a ref shirt. My time, time is now. Sign us up. It's time. So anyway, y- you, you know, think, here, go on. Sorry. Here's another talking point. Sorry. Yeah. I'm just, while we're rattling these off for like pieces, because again, so many questions about what's going to have to be or has been discussed. Because again, some of the talks have been accordingly possibly since July. So, and I would guess given that this just dropped now that you don't talk about a merger without talking behind the scenes for a few months. Yeah. So this probably has been happening, but what, what are the rules going to look like? Yeah. Too? Like some people brought that up. Like what are the changes? You know, do we stay with the Mike Pereira USFL kickoff or do we go with the XFL version that NFL teams are looking at? Do we do two feet in or one foot in, which I think it should be two anyway, because it's, it's gotta more be a professional two. version. Anyhow, receivers benefit on tape with two feet. You are not in college anymore. That's what I'm saying. Seen, and, and that's one that I will like die on saying, if you merge and pick one foot, you went for the worst option for receivers to get good mm-hmm. film. I am sorry. People that claim that one foot is more entertaining are forgetting that this is about developing talent. So pick two feet when you're making the rules first. Right. So that's another rule. I, I think, that, like, yes, a lot of them match up with the OT rules. They have very similar stuff. But like things like the kickoff, the two feet rule, um, and a few minor ones I'm probably spacing on right now that I'll think of as we go to the show. Like they're going to have to decipher a few mm-hmm. of those that will have to be discussed. Um, oh, the extra point. That's another one because the USFL still does the kicking mm-hmm. from one point. The XFL doesn't do that. So you have to decide, do you stick with the USFL setup or do you go full bore? Screw the PAT kicks right. like that. These are things also to be discussed on the side that will decide how the product looks. Now I, I will say this: all these teams, all in all, this is a much easier problem to solve when there was discussion of potentially the XFL and the CFL merging. Because now oh, we're talking yeah, that, about three downs, too. four downs, rouge oh, kicks, all sorts of goofy things. This is, I think this is, you could probably hash this out in a week, a couple of weeks conversation. I mean, at the end of the day, now you have Dean Blandino and our guys over at the USFL to come together. It's literally like, a Fox referee crew yeah. because Dean works for I know, Fox it's crazy. with Mike. I mean, it's all you'd be doing is combining those forces into one trailer again, yep. like they had been. It's uh, by the way, by the way, Mike Pereira, I hope his back heals up very well for this upcoming year. Feel bad that he's not going to be part of the NFL season because of that. So it's a damn shame. You know, hopefully he's back. Got to put the that USFL out there because we need him out yeah. there with his his takes. And maybe we'll get in a good fight on the on TV again because that bantering with Joel Klatt. Yeah, we, we need that. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, I know it, it's it will be. This is all so even crazy to talk about. Think about because. All any of this, any variation of this could happen. I don't I'll say this. I don't think we'll see just 
one league's rules get adopted. At minimum, no. I think we'll see a little bit of each. I I agree with you. I think we should have the two foot inbounds it should be too i could see them taking away the kick even though i like the usfl kick i do like the usfl kick but i could see you know i, I think for for that one in particular i think it just has more momentum in the public mm. eye and that's kind of where i'm leaning on it where it's like as much as i i do love the usfl's version yeah. because it makes it easier for field position but people really like the safety aspect yeah of the and I can't version. be mad at that either, so I won't fault him. So I, at the end of the day, I think we'll see a mix in there. Um, the other crazy thing to think about, so this kind of goes in line. We said we'd be talking about this in the near future. We just never knew what it would really look like. But what does the broadcast deal look like? Because we were talking about, well, does right. NBC get on the mix? So there's going to be a renewal. Well, now with, with the XFL in the mix, there's now ESPN and ABC – kind of holding that duty now there is again if we're more than eight teams we were talking about this you, you almost want a third network and even in this case a fourth if you count ES, espn in the mix mm -hmm. because it helps you spread out those games um it'll be another thing that to that's interesting to think about too is now we'll get in the territory with this amount of teams to where do we see overlapping games I mean, we saw it in the XFL in the, with the USFL you know? in spots. And there was only one game I think went like ma mainly uh, against each other where a lot there's, you know, a couple that ran over. So I think we see more of that. Um, but I don't know. What's your take? What do you think we'll see here when it comes to broadcast? I mean, to me, it feels like it, it's obvious that we'll see ESPN and, and uh, ABC in the mix if this all goes down with the uh, XFL. Uh, but yeah, NBC, yeah, I mean, if, where does that all land? I don't know. If they merge, I mean, it, it's it's going right back to most likely the original broadcast deal from XFL 2.0. Like, I don't see a possibility where you merge and somehow you leave out like cable options like FS1 or ESPN. Right. Now, I know ESPN's going through its own. We're gonna in a few years, you know, do this independent thing where we're gonna sell our package and whatever but espn is still as much as like yes i i am a as you know where i as you know where i've referenced i work fox is a big deal with fs1 espn is the biggest name in sports television outside of anything else mm -hmm. so like you're gonna have espn fs1 if you have fox in a merger you know damn well they're gonna put games on fs1 right they will not leave fs1 off the table because it's a direct competitor with espn the biggest question really is nbc mm -hmm. Because they are the only third party in this option that you have to, if you're going as a collective group, go to and say, hey, should, do you want to be in this? Right. And I think the other wrinkle, because of what's been talked about this summer, NBC's trying to get basketball, mm -hmm. which they're in talk supposedly in trying to possibly put a package together with TN, with like Warner Discovery with TNT mm -hmm. to try and make a package for basketball rights. Right. And the only reason I bring that up is because what has the NBC used since they lost NHL to fill broadcasting gaps? It's been the USFL. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want the USFL or whatever this is coming back, do you pick that or do you go with the NBA deal? Right. And that's where I think you're going to see a lot of like discussion. And this is post when we last talked. Because last time I talked, I was like, okay, we're going to definitely, if they're interested, we'll hear talks this summer. Right. Like they're starting to negotiate now. Well, if it's been July and you've seen essentially XFL with Disney backing, mm -hmm. talking with Fox, supposedly for the last two plus right. months, it's a little harder now on ESNBC because they aren't in the room. Mm -hmm. So I would now wishful thinking you present NBC with a spring football package that has more markets yep. in it. That's the ticket where you go, hey, we can present you a product that now has two audiences combined that should present should promote even better results than the last two mm -hmm. years because the, remember the audience split last year. They still were consistent across the board. They basically matched average viewership and championship game viewership. Right. So if you combine them, it should get hopefully in the eyes of many closer to what we were seeing in 2020 right. now let, where we were getting a little bit more elevated numbers. Sure. Now let me ask you this. That's what you can present NBC, but I don't know if they want to do that as a third party. It's a little different when you're not somehow 
directly connected to it in the room. Here's here's how I I I could see them making this enticing for NBC is you could make a market exclusive to that network. So I think about Notre Dame in college football, right? I don't know if they still are, but for the longest time, their games were only on CBS and CBS always aired their games, right? Now let's say they go back to NBC. Hey, things have changed around. You might get less games this year because we're, we're expanding this and we have to split, spread this out but you're going to get every St. Louis Battlehawks home game or away game. I was game, just about to right, say. To where like all of those people that can't go to the game that are in market are going to tune in, right? So I don't know. To me, because I look at, when I look at the XFL, there's, you could maybe throw St. Louis into, uh, not St. Louis, uh, Seattle into the mix as well. But I would say the two most enticing markets for the XFL, St. Louis naturally, and then DC right behind them. If anything, for the damn beer snake and the lemons alone, they got me intrigued. I know I was always <laughs> yeah. looking forward to watching those home games, right? And let's say you put together a package where, again, you know, maybe you get half DC games and half Battlehawks games, but every week you're going to have one of those two teams, something like that. I think, I, I think I, that helps because even with the NBA, buddy, there's still plenty of airtime that needs to be filled. And depending on how oh, you sure. schedule this thing, who's to say? Who's to say where they end up playing and when they end up playing? I Here's a, here's something I would like to do, mm. actually. So just think about it. So you have three in the room, okay? If Supposedly NBC, if they're interested still, again, wild card right now, they still have a year deal from what it was reported, yeah. reportedly from Yahoo. They were supposed to be a three-year deal. So this would technically be year three. Um, now if this happens, this is what I would experiment with, with your third year. And then maybe I guess try again is if it's say it's 12 teams, this is what I would ideally have. It's 12 teams. You do what the NFL does to credit. It's changed a little bit because now they've started bidding on games for networks, mm -hmm. but traditionally Fox would have the NFC games, CBS would have a AFC NBC, ESPN, you know, they do like Sunday Night Monday right. Football. So here's my pro proposition. Fox gets one of the conferences. ABC, ESPN gets the mm -hmm. other. NBC gets a primetime game every week to play National Spring Football League in a primetime slot or just keep Sunday an Night ideal Football, slot every right? week. Just one yeah. game. Like, just make it the, prim the like, primetime show. You're doing it with... Yeah. You're doing it with the NFL already. They have been a it's been a smash hit ever since NBC took over Sunday Night Football. Those ratings have skyrocketed. They're doing it with Big Ten football now on NBC. Mm -hmm. Why not do it with spring football? Do the same thing. Third concept. NBC has proven they can hype up singular games on their network. They are the largest broadcast network in the country. Take a game, a sole game every week. You can even rotate it. Ten week schedule, mm -hmm. you rotate it every week from one conference for a home game and you make it on NBC exclusively yep. or some platform or Peacock. I hate to even bring it up because some people will start pulling me, pulling pitchforks, but hear me out. You make it like that or whatever mm -hmm. and make it a big time game, you know, make it the flex game. I don't yeah, care, right. yeah. but that's how you entice a third network is give them special priority to a top tier or one of the better matchups that you can project to mm -hmm. them. And it gives more value. Not to mention that if you add the 12 teams and you're merging the top markets with the best attendance markets, that's better value for the network. It's similar to how college football with like Big Ten. You know, you hear how like Fox and ESPN were like, well, if you if you merge these teams yeah. into the Big Ten with like USC and UCLA, you get the LA market. Mm -hmm. That's the whole draw. Oh, sure. Like, so if you bring the best of the best television markets into this package, that's how you entice NBC. Right. You know, the other two networks, it's because they're merging. NBC is the wild card that if you really want them mm -hmm. and you, you should, I think you should. That's what I would do. Yeah, man. It, this is it, again. It seems like every year there's a new little surprise when it comes to spring football. And we have something new and big to look forward to. Uh, just when I thought spring stock three was going to be big, just because we were going into season three. Little did I know that spring stock three is going to be. Whew. I mean, we might see it in Houston. We might see it in Houston. I mean, now, the big question is, yeah. 
which team? Is it going to be the Gamblers? Is it going to be the Roughnecks? Well, I'm going to be the first to say it because I don't think this is going to be a popular opinion out there. Two words, all in. <laughs> 12 and 0 baby how are you not gonna let a team that's about to go 12 and 0 24 and 0 36 and 0 maybe 48 and 0 to win the championship three maybe four years in a row how are you gonna deny destiny i mean if you're already changing the stadium we've already that was a story <laughs> that i broke not too long ago moving from tdecu to rice stadium you might as well go in because I'll tell you, Zachy boy, I live in the Metro Houston area and you'd be shocked at how many people call out my Houston gamblers hat. Some people call out my roughnecks gear. Everybody calls out my gamblers gear, whether it be the older generation. I, I think I've talked about it on the show, the meat man, the guy that works at the deli counter at Kroger, sign him up. He was like, every time I'm in there, oh, it's the news on the gamblers when they come into town. Make it happen. Now, I don't know. What do you hey, think, man. Zach? Am I run, wishful run and, thinking? Run and shoot, run and shoot, Jim Kelly, those all meant, mean something, mm -hmm. and especially because of Houston's presence. I, I, I'm torn on this because, like, I think if there's arguments for both sides, I think that are very reasonable. And I think a lot more of the, I think a lot more because of the fact that the Roughnecks have a fan base currently is what's drawn this. Um, but my art, like I think the historical presence of the gamblers is a brand to me. And again, you can connect it to Jim Kelly. You can connect it to, you know, the fact that the run and shoot is a very, is of course more prominently was established with the gamblers at the time. You know, I don't know. Those are aspects I take with. And again, I think if you're, you're living there, so you have a little bit more of a recent, like if you're getting, I don't know if you're getting more hits, like seeing people in like gamblers gear than you are in like roughnecks gear. I don't know. That just to me screams a little bit of something else. You know, that's your personal experience, of course, but like you have both. Mm -hmm. So you would know what people recognize a bit more in that area. Sure. And I'll tell you this, no matter who it is, I'm either roughing them up or I'm going all in. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it wrong. But I think I'm going all in, baby. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, you know, like I said, maybe that changes scenario. I, I did like, I did like someone's idea and this is a little far fetched, but personally, because again, it's an oiler name. I did like someone's idea of moving the roughnecks. If you did mm -hmm. throw them in Oklahoma and call them the Oklahoma roughnecks or yeah. something like that, you know, yeah. not saying you'd be put them in Tulsa, but like there are options mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it is an oil rich state right. out there. Or I know this might not, maybe this will be a popular opinion the, to me. Again, you're merging the league. You have the opportunity to change some things that may have been a little bit weird. B Brahma's bro. We, I think we can do better. Mm. I mean, San Antonio roughnecks, maybe, I don't know. Ooh. You know what I mean? Messing with, you're talking mess with the rocks team though. That that's where you're getting a little dicey. I mean, I'm just saying, you know? I'm just saying, I, I'll just leave it I, at that. I do like, you know, I do like the uh, this other option I like, for example, and I know we've talked about Austin, Texas on this show a little bit, but I'm not opposed to the Austin Wranglers being one that was thrown out there because I know there was a trademark out there mm -hmm. for them. Four Texas um, teams just it, dominating spring just, football. <laughs> that's where you make a Texas conference. Yeah. You just make six. You know, Then you put one in El Paso. And then you put the college 16, station, brother. I'm I actually I college know, station just up dude, the way. College, <laughs> I would be in heaven because actually college station is closer to me than Houston. I would have decisions to make. That's all I'm saying. Cause college station, especially if they could get like an Aggie style pregame. You, you ever see those at those? <laughs> I need to go to a, a game at Aggie. I've Land. seen some clips. I can That's tell you that. That's what I mean. Just like, I, I, I won't even do it justice, so I'm not going to try, but there's always some little bratty kid out there saying some nonsense, walking off funny. I want to see that. I would I would switch my – I wouldn't switch away from the gamblers. But if the gamblers were in College Station, I'll f 100% rough them what? We're going all a, in over I've here. i got a good feeling that Houston one, point is going to be the like one of the most talked about bits until we get an official like announcement. I, I know – I just assume, given how we saw how the XFL CFL one went mm -hmm. down, that the next step will be both these leagues will l release a statement on social media saying that they are either in advanced talks or that they are 
underway with finalizing a deal. And then we wait again. (laughs) And then later in a month or so, we get the final naming or something like that. Another write up or two. Well, that'll be interesting because I think we'll hear news that it's either official or not. But that I don't think people are fully grasping that that doesn't mean we're getting the teams and the team names and the locations that day. We might. Exactly. We might. Don't get me wrong. Again, they've been talking for a while. They might have some of these things figured out. They might confirm some. Uh, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I mean, to me to say that that's guaranteed. No. Will we get it by the end of the year? I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Um, it's uh, all of this is crazy to me. It's so funny, Zach, too, because what's funny in my day job, I'm dealing with a merger. And so now I'm dealing with a merger okay. in every aspect of my life. I can't escape a merger, but here we are. I'm in the merger mindset. So might as well. And honestly, it's nice to have something to talk about in the off season, something more to speculate. Now I'll tell you this. You want to know my biggest hope of all of this. We have the XFL crowd. We have the USFL crowd. This is a great opportunity. Call me crazy. Everybody. I know this is the internet. This is me sounding crazy. This is a great opportunity for all us to like come together and just enjoy spring football kumbaya easier said than done i'm well aware but i'll tell you this join the discord down below we're always partying we're always having a good time but let's just say let's just throw it out there that the fans don't all just get along i'm kind of okay with that too because now we have a new aspect of rivalry that's not just dependent on location right like there's going to be a good like two years where there's probably going to be some guys that are like did you see the USFL teams all got better records than the XFL teams or my team oh, you beat your XFL coming. team, especially depending, maybe the divisions are USFL and XFL. That's a whole nother thing that we haven't you, even speculated on here. You know, damn well, that's coming. Like it's, whoever stays around, that's going to happen. It doesn't matter. Right. You know, I, I will say that it's, uh, I think no matter what, it'll be a nice refreshing t- breeze, at least of like, I think fan kumbaya in some degree mm. where it's kind of, it'll kind of be needed. I mean, like, I'm not going to lie. Like we know anyone who watches these shows, you know, damn well behind the scenes, you got some of your buddies that'll yell at some other dude for saying, this is a better thing to do. There's folks that blatantly hate the hub model and the XFL fan bases. There's folks that blatantly, you know, don't like how the XFL does things in the U USFL for example, and thinks they're throwing money out with how they did their model. Like mm-hmm. I'm just, whatever this merger comes, like I think that takes some of that pressure off because you don't, you can't argue anything anymore. Right. Like you're in, you're in the same shit. Right. Like you can't just be like, well, F you buddy. Well, it's <laughs> like, well, where are you going to go? You, you're not going anywhere. Your owners just came together right. and said, we're all, we're sa- they're basically saying children get we're along. all one family. <laughs> we're the Brady bunch of spring football. So get signed That's up. That's the way they made a spring football exactly, league. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the rock, he's sitting right in there in the center with the, you know, the moose right next to him. Not the moose, but the moose, yeah, right. <laughs> moose right Here, next to him. Here's a story of a large wrestler. Now, who owned a massive XFL with his yeah. wife. <laughs> and here's a legendary fullback with the gray hair and suit game. That's super effing tight. It's the NSFL. I love it. <laughs> the NSFL. <laughs> you know, can we take a moment to talk about the fact that we have the rock and moose coming together? Like I just like the nicknames involved all around special commentary sesh. We do one game where Dwayne and the moose are sitting there as the color commentators. I don't know what, what Dwayne will do, but I, I know he can hype up a game yeah. and you put in, uh, honestly put in like get Gus Johnson. Somehow just throw Gus. In yeah. There. <laughs> just make it a complete hype fest right. in that booth, <laughs> man. This is going to be, I can't wait till this news drops. I can't wait to talk about this again. Maybe we'll do like a, a, a Monday episode or something so we can get, well, this you're, you're not leaving Zach. The, the tricks on you. No. You ain't no. going nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Jokes, jokes on me. I, I never actually am leaving the show. <laughs> There's too much stuff that I'm like, I can't, I can't bail now. Man. This is exciting times. I mean, I am looking forward to, I was already looking forward to season three of the USFL, but now I'm looking forward to whatever happens out of this. Now, if it's a merger, great. If it's not the one thing I could tell you, Zach, 
the USFL is playing next year one way or another. This Fox yeah. ain't giving up on spring football. Now, will we see more teams if there's a merger? Hell yeah. Dude, I love the idea of kind of combining these things. I mean, from a sel selfish level too, Zach, I mean, now instead of two websites, we just have one to maintain potentially. <laughs> potentially. We merge the websites. Because again, this could all this could not happen, right? It could potentially not merge. I think that's important to talk about. We've that's we're, true. I, I've talked, we've talked a lot about like, well, this could happen. This could happen. What could happen? This and that. But I think it's important just to, cause we're getting near the end here to just bookend it with, if it doesn't happen, don't kill the messenger. We warned you at the beginning. We warned you in the middle and we're warning you at the end. Now they've said it before. You've heard the term, you've heard the phrase where there's smoke, there's fire. I've smelled the fire. I haven't seen the fire. I've smelled it. I've heard the crackling. I've had, I, I, we at least know that there's discussions in the works. Do I think this is going to end up like the XFL and the CFL talks? I don't think so. Do we know what the league is going to be called? No, it no. could be anything. It could be XFL. It could be USFL. It could be NSFL. It could be USXL. It could be whatever you want it, but we, well, maybe we'll know before it's official, but we don't know right now. Um, <laughs> We not, I mean, yeah, there's so many other details. I mean, the, uh, there, for example, uh, I guess one thing I do, I, I can't leave the show without saying this because this is something that I did. We were, a lot of us were thinking about, and, uh, I'll give a uh, hype over there at, uh, all access football, formerly, uh, NFL draft Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, they brought out some terms on the USFL CBA and the union. Cause think about this, the union yeah. is going to be involved in some way. XFL didn't unionize yet. There were talks that they were trying to court maybe the NFL PA, maybe some NFL entity, but they tried unionizing, didn't work. Now with a merger, well, the USFL PA, they, I mean, they have a good relationship with Fox. They aren't going away. Mm -hmm. And according to All Access Football, their, their points are that they, did, they were aware of these talks. Um, then they also are aware that it's a 50 50 ownership split. Like they've been talking, but the big thing was, is that they're trying to further their relationship with the XFL. Once a merger is technically complete, mm -hmm. if that, if, and when that does happen and that at the moment they are carrying on business with the USFL as normal until anything else happens. So if a merger does happen, like to me, that states that the USFL PA is kind of going to become this league's PA, yeah. like basically they're inheriting, which honestly, like if you're merging and you don't have a union in place at that point, like you are going to have that PA fighting. I feel like part of the terms of a merger would be, Hey, we have a union here for players. We're not going to just kill right. that. You mm -hmm. know, that would be damning if you did that. Yeah, I agree. So I think we'll see a continuation. The union's going to stick around. Like, sorry. I think so. That's like XFL players that were coming in, like they're probably going to be unionized underneath that, which I think a sure. lot of them will be happy about. Now they did shoot down the union and there's been discussions on why that may or may not happen. We're not going to jump into yeah. speculation on that because quite honestly, I don't know. And it's one of those subjects that's too touchy, too important to really jump into the speculation zone about. Um, but yeah, I mean, one, we've talked about the benefits of having the union. There's people that are sour on it, but I think at the end of the day, this is something that the players are, kind of hyped on and, and excited to see beyond the b benefits and making sure that there's situations in case, you know, payroll can't be made or not that I think we'll see that in either of these leagues. Uh, but beyond that of having just, okay, here's kind of a game plan of what you can expect. And I mean, free schooling is a big deal as well. Well, yeah, know? I mean, there's so many good benefits to it. Like, I, I think that's, that's one thing like you're not only are you combining this, but look, their pay scale was already close enough as it mm -hmm. is you know, even with the union, but here's the thing, the union benefits gave you that close pay scale. Plus the pay scale gives you more guarantees and the benefits of the 401k, the schooling. I mean, that stuff is super valuable. Mm -hmm. Like that is extremely valuable for your membership, which yeah, you pay dues, but those dues are worth it given what you get back. Right. So like that's a big boost to the merger. I think the other aspect, and this is the final thing I had a thought on, and then we can kind of close this deal out. And it's minor because I think some people are like, dur, 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 this will stick. But I'm like, are, it will stick is the IFL partnership mm. with the XFL. Does that stay 
in a merger scenario. Now, I'm not saying that that dies, but remember, you know, and this might depend on how the schedule goes, right. but if you remember the IFL, now this was stated via the Green Bay, like the Green Bay Blizzards ownership podcast, they stated that the reason that the IFL picked the XFL was partially because the schedule lined up better for right. them in their league year. Now, if they don't, if this merger, say they don't stick to that February schedule and they go into like March and April, does that affect it? Is the merger still technically viable? Do you stick with like grid camps instead of the IFL? Mm -hmm. Like, how does that get affected? Right. I'm not, I know it's a kind of, to some people it's like, well, of course they'll keep it. I'm like, you don't know that. Right. Mergers, mergers are weird. It gives like, you I the chance to not, tinker I at everything. In charge of, I haven't been in charge of one, but I've been through one. Yeah. Random stuff gets dropped sometimes for no reason. Oh, I'll tell you. I'm not saying yeah. it will. I'm not saying it will, but like that is something I am looking to see if they will keep right. it. Right. Well, like just, I said, just I'm going eye. through a merger yeah. right now. It's it's every I can't escape the mergers. I want to. I want. You're you're like you're like in, you are in a forever merger. That, isn't that, it? Every time I talk to you about up? your job, isn't it messed up? Every year, you're in forever merger. It is forever merger. Every time we like finish you are one, always in them. Here's another one. Start it. Start it all over again. Just what I and I, I was like, oh god, I can't wait to go read about some spring football. I need to, I took a break from work because of all this merger talk. And I'm like, it's like all work and no play makes Stefano a dull boy. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, merger, merger everywhere. Uh, but you know what? At the end of the day, I love this. It's going to make a bigger spring football league. I mean, we've talked about this, the USFL being the first spring football league in nearly 40 years to play a season two. They're all, they're about to become the first spring football league to play a spring, uh, a season in nearly, uh, 40 years, uh, third season in nearly 40 years, excuse me. Yeah. But now with this potential merger, they could also be the, the largest spring football league since the original USFL nearly 40 years ago, right. Or 40 years ago to be over. Right. Because if you look at like, yeah. now we're going from eight teams. What was it with the XFL? All iterations, eight teams, the AAF, eight teams. It seems like every, even with the new AFL coming up, 18. Oh, no, never mind. 16. We'll see. <laughs> they say it's happening. Zach, let's pause here. Now, I'm curious. We haven't talked about arena football, but how are you feeling? Because <laughs> it's been Whoa, a wacky. You, what, the, uh, you weren't talking what, about, about mergers the here. The spring uh, Arena football is all over the place, man. It, every Good league's God, got dude. their own thing going on My word word of advice for those who want to follow indoor and arena just just be ready for a lot of stupidity <laughs> and also kind of just hang on to your seat like that's it you know because honestly it, it is insane right now i mean shoot man the afl supposedly has stuff coming out according to the orlando predators doing a live stream recently they got stuff apparently coming out by the end of the month to and, and for sure by october mm -hmm. so that's its own thing. And that's going to be playing in late April. Like hold on to that. I mean, yeah, 2024, but that's its man. own whole cannibal. Like this, this is insane in its own right. But like, if you, like, if you really want to drive yourself nuts, yeah. go fall arena indoor <laughs> football. That that's where you'll start losing a bit of your sanity for like a good, for a bit of your f fandom. Just, just a warning, 100%. just a warning to all of you out there. Alternative you know. football, man. Everybody that gets into it, I know they're like a year later, they start looking like me with bags under their eyes. They're like, <laughs> I need more, but I need less. I need more, but I need it's less. It's because you, you, you throw away sleep to never miss what's Anything. going on. Yeah. That, that's how this works. Well, that's, what's crazy. The discord, I feel like in some points it's more active in the off season. Sometimes I'm like, what is going on here? Which hey, I'm not angry and you should be join the conversation. Just click the link down below the discord. Yes, is please. amazing. I love Jaron Horton Mahler's assistant head coach jumps into the chat earlier after all the news drops. He's like, so is anything good going on today, guys? It's like <laughs> after everybody's just been going on and, on and on. I love it. I love it for that. The discord is amazing just for that. You never know who you're going to see in the discord, who you're going to run into. And Zach and myself, we're in there as well. So if you want to yell at us for anything, you know where to find us. Or if you want to tell us you like us, hey, well, we won't stop you there either. Hey, hey do, do what you tag, tag us on there. We'll, we'll respond uh, easily, but dude, come on in. It's uh, there's no better time than ever. Even now. I mean, there's always been a good yeah. time, but there's no better time than now. If you want to jump in on like prime conversation on every channel, 
it's, it's popping. It's right freaking It's popping. And Zach, you'll appreciate this. 2-0 and oh, fantasy football. You and I next week. <laughs> yes. Even though I the think meeting of the minds. I have, a, I have a feeling you might beat me next week. I was looking. I you know, had man. 199 points this week, Zach. You had 199, I think, in fantasy football. I, I, I did have a good week. But you know, you know damn well it doesn't mean that next week's going to be good. I, I am riding high. I, I like my team at this moment in time. You want to you bet barbecue on it, Zach? <laughs> you know what? You know what? After some conversation, after some inner thought and how I handled the post-loss <laughs> depression of that barbecue scenario, I, do, I don't mind betting barbecue again. I, you know what? I take it back. I I will do it. See, again. that's the that's the trick. You're gonna win the barbecue, but you're gonna lose the rest of the season. <laughs> I will I will I will do this if you are serious. No, I'll bet some barbecue, and hopefully, it. spring stock three is in Houston, and I could show you some good barbecue. So, are we, so this is a question: Are we doing it for the potential Houston team versus Michigan matchup again? Or are we doing it for this week? For I say we do it for football, fantasy football. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I will, I will, whoever wins, one of us will save the betters slip, if you yeah. will, and cash that in later next spring. Let's make sure we do that. It's on the mm. show. People will not forget this now. They'll have this forever locked and in. And you know what, Zach, so, if I'm nice, I'll let you go double or nothing after you lose this weekend in the first game. In oh, the there, well, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's it. That's perfect. Just two then, plates then of barbecue. Be- I want it all now. <laughs> I need something for now and yep. later, man. Yeah, exactly. I, I, the I doggy the, bag. I got to have the whole weekend. Yeah, covered. no, good point. Good point. Um, but man, oh man, oh man. Dude, I, now I am thinking like, what if there's a situation? Because I'm thinking about New Orleans. We don't know where these teams are going to land, but let's say they end up in New Orleans and in Houston. And there's a way we could do like what we did with Birmingham and Memphis this year. I mean, th- that is not an unreasonable. No, trip. it's not at all. It's, it's at all. I think four or four and a half hours, probably three in the Tesla. If you let me do my thing, you know, uh, <laughs> just, let me, just let me go to sleep first. Yeah, so I don't really floor feel like <laughs> you'll be like one of those, you know, the astronauts, your, your cheeks will be like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's an out of body yeah. experience. It'll be good. He put it in self drive yeah. mode. <laughs> we're just looking around and be like man the stars look crazy tonight and we look down the earth is just below us we're in space you know? those racing stripes really made it like that much yep. faster <laughs> knew i shouldn't have put that spoiler on but anyway <laughs> anyway 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 man oh man i'm glad we had a chance to catch up even though, especially because i thought it was going to be a while before we did another episode together at I, least i don't know dude what what are the odds we got this to hit? right now like, here's the deal if this thing yeah. drops like this Friday, we should get together like Sunday or Monday and do it again. Why the hell not? And uh, sir, no, no, I I agree. Some way, shape, or form, I will find a way to get a show done with you, where we'll knock it out. If they get it done this week, it might not be the next day. Mm-hmm. Like, but we'll get a show together, knocked out. We'll chat. The answer is always yes. Yeah, the answer is always yes. The, and as we've said, and this here. might be the last episode of the USFL podcast. Stay tuned. To see what we might be called the next time around. Imagine, imagine it, man. The the possibilities, they're endless. They're endless. But I'm looking forward to it. I mean, we could just be the newsroom podcast, but that'd be boring. Uh, No, I mean, I wouldn't. It could work, but like, well, I don't know, man. I think I'm almost now hoping it's the NSFL just for the sake of like, just switching a yeah, letter well, and it, honestly, just to make it that I'll much literally I'm just going to turn the U upside down and we're just going to make it an under because to me, then it's per, it, it's super easy and ha sign me up. Rebrand Reishmand. Crossing my fingers. Yep. Otherwise keep USFL. If it's, it'd be weird if it's like, Oh, now we're the XFL podcast. And there's a few others out there. Like, wait a yep. minute. <laughs> Yep. Oh, look, the dog, see, the dog knows the podcast is almost over. Yes. Yes, Nova. I'm almost done. Oh, good Nova. Yes. yes. So on that note, oh, you want to join us on that note? I think that's it, Zach. Any, <laughs> any final words before we head off into the, uh, into the sunset here? Uh, guys 
stay tuned. It's going to be a fun, fun time ahead. And uh, hi, Nova. Yes. <laughs> I, I saw, I was just trying to look your face. Just, <laughs> I don't know. It, that's a, that's a video version you want to tune in for type of moment. hundred percent. Yeah. Audio <laughs> listeners, you're missing out. But if you want to be nice, go leave a review on the podcast, the audio version. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, click the bell it builds morale. We never know where we're going to be tomorrow or the next week. So join us along for the ride. You'll see when we're dropping new episodes. Make sure you're following us. Maybe a limited time only at USFL Podcast, yeah. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Threads, uh, and TikTok. Sign us up with the dances. Until next time, everybody, sign you up.